Hello and welcome back to Valley Without Wind. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off last week, so we're loading our existing world. Uh, even though the world is the same, uh, we've had a week's worth of upgrades to the game itself, uh, so there's a lot of new stuff that you'll notice, such as I'm going around here and picking up uh, all these profession books that will let me unlock new crafting recipes in the three main uh, crafting professions. That would be Outfitter, Spell Gym, and Spell Scribe. This is the Outfitter um, workbench, and I'm looking here, it's like the heat suit here, and that's one that I have to unlock. Um, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to the Hearth Guardian, and I'm turning in one of those Outfitter books, and then you can see here, all that. those are the costs up at the top, and then there's four different options for uh, choosing what to unlock from that book. Uh, each time you turn in a book you get four options that are randomized from all your current available options of stuff you haven't unlocked yet and then you get to choose. So now I've got the heat suit that I couldn't uh, get before. I've put it on but uh, it offers no protection against the cold unlike my normal snowsuit so uh, that means I started taking uh, cold damage instantly. So I'll take that back off, heal myself and here we go. Um, so we can also build things with the Outfitter like traps, um, buildings and so forth. We can also do demonstrating that trap on myself there. Now let's unlock some actual new spells. So that'll be spell gems here and these are four of the options that I'm getting here. Uh, Energy Pulse and Circle of Fire are both pretty interesting. Um, Energy Pulse has replaced the older Energy Lance. Um, and uh, so we're going to go on and unlock both of those. It's my good fortune that Energy Pulse was still there the second time when I went back because it's random each time we look in here. Another cool thing about this is that uh, for every profession book that I turn in, I'm gaining experience points as well. Uh, so about one more and I'm going to level up. Um, so Tidal Pulse is here. That's a fun one. Uh, that'll be that'll be good to show and now I've leveled up there we go we're now Civ level 2 so kind of the first level in this game getting from Civ level 1 to 2 is actually pretty free locking a spell scroll not one that we can craft for a while because we don't have iron yet but there aren't many spell scrolls yet so that's the only option we have so far there will be more by beta um, spell scrolls are all limited use versus spell gems use magic points in are unlimited use. We pop by the crest interface here. It's a lot more advanced though, so not for right now. This is here the uh, actual spell gem interface, which is probably going to be your bread and butter. This is where you come to make the actual magic spells that you will be using most of the time. You can see they've each got a large icon as well as a small one. So first thing we're doing is building the ring of fire, circle of fire, sorry. And then uh, I'd like to build a light snake, but I don't have any cherries, so I can't. Um, but we can build the energy pulse, so that's great. Um, I'm using a lot of my default resources that I start out the game with now. Those were retroactively added to the save game that I have. So I have uh, what I had collected in the last video that you saw, like the granite and that particular spell gem and, and dust, the opal. But uh, I also have, um, I think it's two of each color of gem and dust now to start out the game. Every time you have a new character you get that so that way you're not having to go through this 15 or 20 minute preparatory period. You can come right in the game, unlock a few things, kind of get a custom loadout right from the start. Not a very advanced custom loadout but still and then go. So now as you see here I've been uh, demonstrating some of these spells. Uh, I really like the ice cross in particular. It's a, a neat effect, I think. And then now I'm in my inventory and I'm rearranging uh, my spells some. So uh, you can see me firing the energy pulse there. I think it's much more visually pleasing than old energy lance. Uh, here we've got the tidal pulse, which is pretty neat. And whoops, I just uh, hit my robot friend with a uh, giant rock. Um, and fortunately, he's not dead. I'm running low on magic points, so good time to use one of those magic potions that I got uh, in the last uh, episode. And now it's time to get out of here. With that's that's the basics of crafting, anyhow. And uh, now we're back to the world map. You can see this has changed too. 
Uh, everything that has a little number shows what's in range of me. And you can see as the windstorm gets closer and closer to happening, these numbers get closer and closer to me. So I walk, you know, over to the one place, and that's as far as I can go without the windstorm getting me. Now I can see there are two wind shelters that are in range of me there, or two potential wind shelters. I haven't built them yet, but they can become part of my network if I build a wind shelter there. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, you'll notice there's actually an NPC here. Uh, wind shelter sites for some thematic reasons that we'll talk about in the future uh, tend to have uh, lone NPCs there. It's a safe place that NPCs can be at, relatively speaking. Uh, the monsters won't bother them because they've figured out a way to kind of kind of hide from the monsters. I should clarify the monsters won't bother the NPCs here. These NPCs are kind of hiding, but there's other places where you get into a big fight. So now I've come over here um, to a grasslands area, which is great. I'm sitting here in my starting chunk invincibility, so um, I'm able to adjust my loadout and kind of look at what's going on here without getting uh, attacked. And that's very important because there's a boss here. This is a level 8 boss because I was crazy and came into this level 8 region. Uh, I'm going to go in this house. I went on and got out of there with that boss because, man, he was just going to kill me. I barely do any damage against any of these guys because I'm level 2. I have tier 1 equipment. And, yeah. Um, so you can see some of the new interior shapes that Eric has been working on. I think they're pretty cool. Um, you can also see how there are now lights hanging from the ceiling inside. Um, all the interiors are not just dark all the time. There is a lighting model which gets used on the interiors, but uh, you know they're reasonably well lit in a large part of them. There are dark parts and light parts basically, but there's there's a fair bit of light. It's not like caves in uh, this game or anything like that. Um, so another thing that I should mention is that um, the lights can be destroyed and the uh, the hanging lights, depending on how low the ceiling is, they you can walk past them, but your spells will hit them, and so will enemy spells. So that actually adds some tactical cover or um, you know some tactical obstacles depending. Um, that was a terrible shot with that rock. Well, the lights on the inside are actually destructible, like most background objects. So um, once they take too many shots, they stop providing any cover and uh, they stop providing any light because they're gone. Um, this region is really uh, much, 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 much too high level for me. I, I barely do any damage to the monsters at all, so I'm going to get out of here. Um, more specifically, I'm going to die because I forgot to s stop running as I came into this chunk with the boss, and it turns out that the boss was right where I came in, and so he just one, one slashed me, <laughs> and that was it. Um, so now I've chosen a new character, which... I wanted to show you anyhow, and uh, you'll notice that he starts out with basically fire touch and not much, el much else. I could go on and craft myself some new stuff because I've got a uh, starting loadout that he came out back with, but what I'm actually going to do instead is do a little corpse run because I died in such an easy area to get to aside from the boss that I can uh, use my starting loadout to come and get back exactly the equipment that I lost. Um, one thing I should stress is that unlike a lot of games, um, your equipment loadout doesn't uh, doesn't time out. You don't. It doesn't go away uh, after it's been out in the the level too long. So, what I'm doing is uh, <clears throat> setting up these wooden platforms, and you know this boss is just waiting right under me, unfortunately. But uh, I managed to snag it as I ran by. And now the boss is there. So now this is what I should have done: is come back into this chunk and just stand there, and the I'm completely invisible to the enemies. I'm completely invincible for as long as I want to stand there. I can adjust my inventory, uh, you know, scope things out. And I did that earlier in this same video. Um, so anyway, I've got everything that I had back. And I've got a new character. I've got all the crafting materials and stuff that are new as well. And uh, hooray. Now I can uh, get out of this region as soon as this boss leaves me alone. Now, in the past, we've talked a lot about permadeath, and uh, you know, as you can see, that's still a feature of the game, very much so. But it's not—it's not like in a roguelike where that uh, ends your play experience. That other character I had, uh, she's dead, and that's the end of her. Everything that she had accomplished, um, you know, get noted on her tombstone and so forth. We don't have those actually seeding into the game yet, but you know, characters that knew her, uh, if she did something good or particularly bad to them. You know, they would be 
sad or happy about the fact that she's dead, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So dying is more of a story event rather than a, a punishment. So permadeath in a story sense, um, if I had gone way deep into some region, really overextended myself, and then died there, that also would have been more of a punishment because, you know, I couldn't do a corpse run very easily to get back in there, but I died in a really easy to get to spot, so that made it even less of a penalty, which is nice. Um, you notice I'm in a level 2 region now, so that, that boss there was really, really easy by comparison. These espers, same sort of deal. Uh, you can see some of the new spells here that I'm using, and uh, some of those cut through all the background objects as well as actually cutting through the, uh, the enemies themselves. So that's pretty interesting. to some surface tunnels here, which is the last thing that I wanted to show. Um, you'll notice that these new uh, ladders here, these little ledges, if I push the down key, um, then or you know, down on the joystick, whatever, uh, you'll notice that I fall right through them, which is really handy, but otherwise I can land on them. I can also jump up through them very freely. So it really uh, makes it a lot easier to get around in here. I'm not having to come in and put little wooden platforms of my own. Most of the platforms are just already there. Uh, that means that uh, the vertical movement still has meaning. It's still easier to go down than up, much, much easier. But it's not so darn hard to move up um, because really, uh, what was that adding to the game? I'd kind of already been thinking that way anyhow, but some of the feedback uh, after the last video also kind of led me that direction. Uh, you will still need the wood platforms or double jump or whatever, like ride the lightning, but um, not in every area. Uh, in the lava flats, for instance, these little uh, little uh, automatically seated ledges, they only come in there like 10% of the time instead of 90% of the time. Uh, so, um, you know, depending on where you go, you'll have more or fewer of these. But uh, as you can see, I'm able to really bound around very easily in here. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of risk from falling. That's it for this time. Uh, next time we hope to show um, recruiting NPCs to your settlements and uh, going to evil outposts and stuff like that.